How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a video on 10 cheap hot hatchbacks that you can buy for under £10,000. I absolutely love hot hatchbacks and recently we've seen a lot of them come to really decent prices despite having insane performance. I've ordered these cars from slowest to fastest from 0 to 60 just to reduce bias on my side and I walk you through the maintenance repairs and all that good stuff but don't forget that tax and running costs and maintenance are just generally important to remember when buying any second hand car. And don't forget that I'm in the UK so prices in other countries may differ. If you enjoyed the video make sure you hit the like button. I I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe as well if you're new, but without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's kick this video off with one of my favourite looking hatchbacks on this list, but obviously the slowest is the Alfa Romeo Brera JTS, which hosts a 3.2 litre V6 engine, putting out 256 brake horsepower, which takes from 0 to 60 in 6.8 seconds. When released, it was received with general agreement that it was a very pretty car both inside and out, however the handling was heavily criticised, so Alfa took the car to Pro Drive to make a limited edition example of only 500 units with upgraded suspension for the handling and a Pro Drive exhaust as well as 19 inch wheels and some sportier trim. This is also a bit of a throwback to the Alpha 155, which was run by ProDrive during the British Touring Car Championship in 1994 and 1995. If you're looking for hot hatch vibes, then definitely try and go for one of these as it's a sportier offering all around and the interior comes with some pretty sick options too. This Italian butte starts at around the £6,000 mark and for 10 grand, you're looking at a 2007 to 2009 ProDrive edition with between 60 to 80,000 miles on it, depending on condition. In terms of reliability, the Brera does have a £3,000 timing chain service required at 100,000 miles and the gearboxes are known to be troublesome too if not looked after. Outside of that watch out for rust on the front subframe and knocks from the suspension particularly on the front. As I always say it's an alpha so you buy it for the passion not the reliability. Next up is a highly respected name within the car world the 6th generation VW Golf GTI with its 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 putting out 207 brake horsepower the lowest of any car on this list which still gets to 60 in 6.7 seconds. Though this was the first generation to bring out the R as opposed to the R32, it's still slightly out of our price range, so the GTI provides the next best thing. Reviews from owners and journalists alike note really good handling and build quality mixed with comfort, but also mention the fact that the power delivery is pretty poor, which checks out considering it's at number 9 on this list. You see a lot of features from previous generation GTIs dragged onto this one, like the alloys, red trim lines, and of course the tartan seats, and it comes in both manual or DSG automatic depending on your preference. These start at around £5,500 with high mileage and for 10 grand you're looking at a 2009 model with under 40,000 miles on it. On reliability, the DSG sadly has the same mechatronic issue as the previous generation, so be wary of this if you go automatic, and the engine has the classic VW issue of coil packs going, but this is a cheap and easy fix if it does happen. Also on the turbo, the diverter valve can fail causing the car to not reach peak power, but again this is a 30 quid fix, so all all in all not a bad car in terms of reliability. I would recommend going for a manual 3 door as it's slightly cheaper than a 5 door equivalent with better fuel economy, emissions and reliability. Next up is the R56 Mini Hatch John Cooper Works which has a 1.6 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine putting out 208 brake horsepower which gets from 0 to 60 in 6.3 seconds. The idea behind the JCW is that it replicates the Challenge race car in road car form but in reality they are basically Cooper S's with slightly more power and some other sportier features like the Brembo brakes, stiffer sports suspension and a bunch of electronic management or control systems from BMW, as well as more aggressive aesthetics all around. But the key thing to note about these is the year you buy is massively important. If you get one from before the 2011 model year, be aware that you'll be getting the far less reliable N14 engine which was renowned for its dreaded timing chain failure, while from 2011 onwards you got the N18 which has proven to be far better. I would highly recommend you aim for an N18 which will cost you slightly more as the old N14s are available for a minimum of around £3,000, while ten grand will get you that N18 block with around 60,000 miles on it. If you do get an N18 JCW, I reckon you're very much in for a treat, as the car is really good looking on both the exterior and interior, draws some attention to itself, has a lot of potential modifications if you're that way inclined, and you often see them running well on track days. In seventh, it's the third generation Ford Focus ST, which has a 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 from the Mondeo, putting out 246 brake horsepower and managing not to 
Master 60 in 6.3 seconds, which matches the Mini, but I put it ahead due to the higher brake horsepower figure. Compared to the previous gen, it was given a more aggressive body design with that large air intake on the front and bigger rear wing to match, as well as wider sills and central exhaust exit at the rear. It comes in ST1, ST2 and ST3 trim levels, and the ST3 is affordable within the £10,000 price range, which is probably worth it as you get a nice set of leather Recaro seats rather than the cloth ones you get in the ST1. By the way, trim levels are different between the US and EU markets, so if you're watching from the US, you might not get the same as we do here in the UK. The one thing I'd say that lets this car down is the fact that it has that inline 4 engine. The Mark II ST had that stunning inline 5, which definitely sounds a bunch better in my opinion and goes pretty nicely too. The cheapest examples are listed for around £7,500, and 10 grand will get you a 2014 ST3 with around 70,000 miles on the clock. On reliability, these are susceptible to problems caused by low speed pre ignition, so if you're buying one, try to find an owner that knows what that is, has used the right oil and petrol, and driven their car accordingly. There are a few other known issues with coolant leaks and some electronic issues as well, but owners generally note it's a reasonably reliable car. On to another of my favourite looking cars on this list, the Renault Megane RS, based on the third generation Megane with its 2 litre turbocharged inline 4, which puts out 246 brake horsepower and does 0 to 60 in 5.9 seconds. The car is wholly aimed at providing a hot hatch experience with its 6 speed manual box, Brembo brakes, lower and stiffer suspension, and sporty interior with Recaro bucket seats. It's also aggressive looking on the exterior with the front splitter and rear diffuser, as well as having wider wheel arches and sills. If you manage to get a cup variant, you also get a lighter car with a stiffer chassis and track focused suspension, plus an LSD for good measure. A pretty useful piece of kit overall, although maybe slightly less comfortable as a daily. These are listed for a minimum of around 7 grand, while £10,000 will get you a 250 cup chassis with around 80,000 miles or a normal RS with around 50,000 miles on the clock. Despite Renault not being renowned for reliability, the engine has proven itself to be relatively strong as long as the cam belt and water pump have been changed on time. However, there are known oil leaks, a clicking sound from the flywheel, and the gearbox can also show wear through noise. Do your due diligence and find one that's been serviced properly and you'll likely have a good motor on your hands. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are, make sure you hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. And make sure that you've subscribed so that you get my two videos every single week. And if you want to know when they drop, hit the notification bell and it will let you know. Oh, and follow me on Instagram at cars with JB. I'm trying to hit 10K over there this year and 100K over here. So both of those things would be very helpful. Kicking off the top five is the second generation Mazda 3 MPS or Mazda Speed 3 for those of you in the US with its 2.3 litre turbocharged inline four, which puts out 256 brake horsepower and takes the car from 0 to 60 in 5.9 seconds. It had a bunch of small but effective upgrades over the previous generation. And while the engine was the same, the ECU was worked on to give you more usable power and the gear ratios were modified for longer gears from 2nd to 5th, while 1st and 6th gear remain the same. Tyres are wider and brakes are bigger than the 1st Gen Model 2, and the bonnet scoop actually serves a purpose as it feeds directly into the intercooler, which has a much shorter loop. According to reviewers, the car is actually underrated on speed 2 as it was found to do 0-60 in 5.2 seconds despite officially being noted at 5.9. These are listed for a minimum of around £6,500 and for 10 grand, you are looking at a 2011 example with 50,000 miles on the clock. Reliability is good too, although the timing chain can be an issue if not changed on time and turbos can fail with oil contamination. The main complaint I could find from owners though was the more basic and boring interior than many of the other cars on this list, but considering it is quick for the money and highly tunable to, not a bad trade-off. Just missing out on the top three, it's the Vauxhall Astra J VXR, or OPC if you're in Europe, which has a 2-litre turbocharged inline 4, putting out 276 brake horsepower, which takes the car from 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds. Like the Megane RS Cup, it comes with an LSD and Recaro bucket seats, as well as active sport suspension, and of course the obligatory more sporty body kit and interior. I would say this model hasn't yet cemented itself in the same way the previous generation VXR did, but as time goes by, it's becoming an increasingly attractive offering with its decent performance figures matched with very nice options, not forgetting the aero pack option as well, which makes it look more aggressive. And these examples usually require a higher premium. These start at around £8,000 of a 10 grand you're looking at a 2012 example with around 30,000 miles on it, so pretty reasonable. However, a lot of owners very quickly started to have problems with these on release, including gearbox issues, brake failures, and simple stuff like bad paint and electricals going wrong. In some cases, cars that weren't serviced literally had pistons 
crack, requiring a whole new engine, not a good look. On the VXOC forum, there's a whole section devoted to the VXR's problems, in fact. This may be why the cars haven't demanded the respect of the previous generation, they simply aren't dependable enough. In third is the second generation Audi S3 with its 2 litre turbocharged inline 4 engine, which puts out 261 brake horsepower and takes the car from 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds. It sits on the same platform as the Mark 6 Golf, so the same as the Golf GTI I mentioned previously, but it's also got a Haldex all wheel drive system, though not always running all four wheels wheels, but you could get a Haldex controller to change that if you wanted to. It's practically the sister car to the Mark 6 Golf R, with the same engine, same all-wheel drive and all that good stuff, but cheaper, in part thanks to having an even quicker older brother, the RS3. It comes as either the Hot Hatch or the Hot Estate, which is named the Sportback. You can also get it as a manual or DSG Auto, and the interior is actually quite similar to the Mark 6 GTI in terms of features and feel. You can find these for a minimum of around £5,000, and for ten grand, you are looking at a 2010 example with around 80,000 miles on the clock. Overall, they're not bad on reliability, but there are some known things that can go wrong, like coil packs, window regulators, ABS control modules, thermostats, and the DSG box, as well as the potential of carbon buildup. None of these cause too much jeopardy, but they can cost a lot to fix. The two things owners note you should change anyway to ensure peace of mind are the cam follower and oil pickup pipe, both of which cost around £40, and both can cause major problems in the case of a failure, so worth doing. When the Impreza was switched from the saloon to a hatch, back, a lot of people, including myself, didn't like it, but I must admit it has grown on me, and the WRX STI is no slouch thanks to its 2.5 litre turbocharged Boxer 4, which puts out 295 brake horsepower and takes the car from 0 to 60 in 5 seconds. In all markets other than Japan, the car wasn't actually called the Impreza anymore, just WRX STI, leading on to the newer cars we see today. One of the reasons why it went hatchback was just in line with trends that were taking place in the World Rally Championship at the time, with other manufacturers heading that way and building more nimble cars, the Impreza needed to go that way as well. Compared to the WRX, it is wider overall with wider track too, and has a bunch of other features specifically built for the STI like the aluminium suspension components and electronic stability control, as well as the LSD which can be controlled to have full lock or be fully open. The cheapest examples of these are pretty much at the £10,000 mark and have anywhere between 60 to 100,000 miles on the clock. Reliability really lets these down though, with the biggest problem being the Ringland problem causing total engine failure. Failure. This is known on both low and high mileage examples as well, so it's a bit of a gamble going for one of these. I'd almost consider swapping out the 2.5 litre block for the more reliable 2 litre example if I had one and it blew up. Taking the video by storm with a 0-60 time of just 4.9 seconds is the F20 BMW M135i with its 3 litre turbocharged inline 6 engine which puts out a massive 315 brake horsepower. BMW saw the success of the hallowed 1M of the previous generation 1 series and capitalised on this by bringing in the M135i, which is basically a more affordable, less rare model for car enthusiasts without the budget for a top of the line example. The idea was bang for buck as it came in cheaper than the RS3 and A4 AMG, but with a lot of the performance still. If you get the M Performance kit, it looks pretty savage too, with some nice carbon fibre features, plus the interior is pretty plush too. One of the nicest on this list, in my opinion, when it comes to luxury and comfort, which is saying something as I'm often quite harsh on BMW interiors. It has ample leather and usability, depending on what options have been specced, and generally just looks really good. Like the Impreza, these have only just dipped below the £10,000 mark, and you're looking at relatively high mileage for that kind of money. The car has proven in the most part to be reliable, though the ZF automatic gearbox can start to whine which will need a new and very expensive replacement. It is important to note that there were quite a few teething problems when the car was new, which have mostly been sorted out by this point but worth checking on the car that you go for. I'd actually quite like to have one of these, but I'd maybe wait for them to drop a little further in price. So I hope you enjoyed this video, I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say about it and what other hot hatchbacks you think we should get for under 10 grand. let me know in the comments down below. Massive thank you to the patrons as always and to you guys as well for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Listen.